We have gathered here to honor South Africans who sacrificed their lives during the Battle of Delville 100 years ago, regardless of race, color, or creed. We are here to honor, in particular, black people who fell in this war, who were not accorded the respect and the recognition they deserve, and which is equal to that of their white compatriots. Battle of Devilwood, where we stand today, was the first major engagement entered into by the South Africans on the Western Front during the First World War, also known as the Great War. From the 14th to the 20th July 1916, a century ago, the South African 1st Infantry Brigade was engaged in one of the bloodiest battles ever fought. For six days and five nights, a soldier was killed every minute, with one South African soldier dying every three minutes. The brigade was asked to break through the enemy lines by any means. The commander, brigade, brigadier, general Lukin received the order to take and hold the wood at all costs. They suffered losses of 80% and yet they managed to hold the wood as ordered. This fit was described as the bloodiest battle on the hell of 1916. Of the 3,153 men who entered Devilwood, only 142 survived. Honored guests, as we mark a hundred years of the Battle of Devilwood, we have to continue to correct the past wrongs. I refer to the fact that of the South African contingent who served in France during World War I, most were drawn from the South African native labor contingent, the SANL. Yet, the role played by the South African Native Labour Corps has received hardly any attention in South African military history. The main involvement of this contingent was to provide the logistical support offloading millions of tons of ammunition and supplies necessary to continue the war on the Western Front. As blacks, they were not allowed to bear arms for two main reasons. First, giving black and white South Africans the same rules, uh, the same roles 
in the war was seen to accord blacks the same status as whites. Allow me to reflect on what it is that led thousands of black men at the time under the yoke of colonial domination and oppression to volunteer to take part in the Great War. The answer to this is first found in the inscription on the stone, not very far from here, and set in the peaceful cornfields on the hills surrounding the town of Akla Batir, Batai, where 260 graves of men from the South African Native Labour Corps are found. Therein inscribed in English, Sesotho and Isikosa are the words. And I quote, to the memory of those natives of the South African Labour Corps who crossed the seas in response to the call of their great King George V and laid down their lives in France for the British Empire during the Great War 1914 to 1918. This memorial is erected by their comrades." Unquote. This inscription tells the chilling story of how oppressed South Africans at the time believed they could, through their participation in the Great War, receive their liberation in exchange for all. We know this did not happen, and the oppressed had to eventually take up arms to achieve their freedom, decades after the Great War. Honorable guests, Devlewood Memorial was inaugurated in 1926. In 1952, a stone was added to commemorate those South African soldiers who died during the World War II. But only white South African soldiers were buried at Devil. Fallen black South Africans who served during the First World War are buried elsewhere in France. The injustice that we have to redress is that the Devilwood Memorial Museum in the past reflected a very biased South African military history. The construction, rehabilitation, configuration and reinterpretation of this heritage site is the commitment of the people of South Africa to present an accurate, balanced and integrated historical account of the involvement of all South Africans, black and white, men and women, in the world world war. It is a collective and shared commitment to recognize and commemorate those who dedicated and sacrificed their lives to a just cause to promote peace and harmony. They are loyal compatriots or loyal compatriots and engagement was not in vain. We, the government and the people of South Africa, 
hereby extend our gratitude to the French government and its people for assisting in the management and conservation of this heritage site unveiled on the 12th of July 2016 by the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency J.G. Zulu. Thank you.